Welcome back to the channel. Today I have an old build that came back to visit me. It's from about 10 or 12 years ago, something like that. It's a 2004 Pontiac Grand Am GT with the SCT appearance package. Big surprise, right? And it's here because the money light's on. Big surprise, right? The code is a P0128, which is for a thermostat. Now I did drive it around just to verify it is not reaching operating temperature, and it's not. So pretty easy to diagnose. And luckily the parts are pretty cheap both in quality and in price, which is why I end up doing a lot of these. So I'm gonna share a bunch of tips that I've learned over the years to make this job a little more manageable so you don't end up pulling your hair out and ending up like me. So the first tip I have for you is my favorite, and that is procrastination. We're gonna let this thing sit for a little while so it can cool off because we need to work right around the exhaust crossover pipe, which is conveniently located right behind the thermostat housing. Good job, engineers. So I've tried doing it when it's hot before, it just doesn't work out. So we're just gonna let it cool off and then we'll jump into it. When you wanted partial credit on your assignment. If you don't understand what's wrong with this picture, then you may be guilty of such egregious acts. The closeout panel goes underneath the bumper. And if you're wondering why I have such an irrational disdain for doing it incorrectly, you've never reached underneath the hood to release the safety and gotten that closeout panel in between your finger and fingernail. Ouch. So when it's under the bumper, that's avoided. Now we're going to pull the top to our air box off. We already unclipped all the sensors, the mass airflow sensor and the intake air temperature sensor. We pulled the breather hose out of the snorkel and then we loosen the clamp that holds the snorkel to the throttle body. Now we can pull the two screws out that hold our lid onto our air cleaner base. Unclip our throttle, cruise and shift cable. We have to pry the snorkel off the throttle body. And our lid's off. That's a nasty air filter. I guess Jiffy Lube wasn't able to upsell them. We can pull our duct out for our ram air. Just supposed to be three push pins, if there were only two. Somebody's been here before. And pull the base of our air cleaner off. Slide it out of its grommets. And there's our thermostat housing, hidden behind that crossover pipe. Don't be fooled. You don't want to try to take that crossover pipe off. It makes this job way more difficult. So the top bolt isn't too bad. We can get an extension and a socket, get straight at it. The other bolt is right behind that crossover pipe and there's really no way to get directly at it. So they do sell this tool, which I will make available in my Amazon store. And I'll put the link to all the parts and tools that I'm gonna show you down in the description if you don't wanna go hunting for them. So you can do this job a little easier. It's basically just a wrench bent in a U shape, which I had made my own and then bought one that somebody made for me. And you just reach up around here and you can get to that other bolt. Now, if you don't want to buy a special tool, I've used a crow's foot and a stubby wrench and any number of methods to get to it, but I have gotten to it without this. Although this does make my life a little easier and it's not super expensive. So let's start getting this thing apart and then I'll show you an easy way to put it back together. So the engineers decided, you know what this thermostat housing needs? A coolant line going to it. So we need to remove that first. I have tried cheating it before and it ends up just being a bigger pain. So go ahead and take it off. It's just an inverted flare nut that screws into a brass fitting. And the worst problem you usually have is that brass fitting starts to unscrew from the housing. So you just have to hold it with a wrench while you unscrew the inverted flare nut. This one I got lucky and it came right off. So this was even easier. Definitely not worth the struggle. We just tuck that line up out of the way so we don't have to work around it. And we'll disconnect our upper radiator hose Somebody's been here before and they were nice enough not to put spring clamps on it for us. I'd appreciate that. It was probably me. I just stuffed the radiator hose behind the battery to keep it out of our way. And now we're ready to unbolt our thermostat housing. We put our little magic wrench on our bottom bolt. We'll do that one first because that's where our struggle is going to be. And we broke it free so it usually goes pretty easy from here. Of course you can only go a tenth of a turn at a time. Once we get it backed out and it's loose enough, we'll get our fingers in there, use our Kung Fu grip to take it out the rest of the way. 
There's one. Another easy one. Our socket doesn't quite fit in there, so you just gotta slide it up underneath that coolant line. And that one broke loose, so we're in pretty good shape to not have any struggles with this job. Every 15 minute job is just one broken bolt away from being a two hour ordeal. Our bolt's out, we didn't even drop it. We'll just pull our thermostat housing off of here. Of course, the thermostat's stuck to the housing, so we can't get it out of there. I'm just gonna pry it out of the housing. Move the housing out of there, complete with gasket. Then find our thermostat that's down in the valley. In the pile. You now with the thermostat housing out of the way, you can see the intake. And it does have a little ridge in there. That's where our thermostat and gasket sit. We're at the worst part of this job, and that's the part where we need to get our thermostat and gasket to sit in the intake while we try to get our thermostat housing over it. And the problem is, not a whole lot of room in there. You try to get your finger in there to hold that thermostat and put the housing over it. By the time you get the housing in there, the gasket and the thermostat fall out of there. You can try holding it in there with a little silicone or grease, but it usually ends up falling off because you bump it with the thermostat housing there isn't a whole lot of room in there so the best way to get that thermostat to stay in there while you work around it is to pull the system into a vacuum now once that thing is in a vacuum you got plenty of movement in there you can bump it and it will still pretty much stay in there unless you really hit it hard and then you're going to know but you can be sure when you get it all back together that you're not going to have any leaks so in order to pull it into a vacuum we're going to use this little guy now, this comes with a hefty price, but it does make our whole life a whole lot easier. It will pull everything into a vacuum and then refill it when we're done, which is handy because a lot of times if somebody's been here before, they've broken the bleeder off here and refilling it can be quite a pain and take quite a while. So this thing doesn't matter. We don't have to open that bleeder. It'll pull all the air out of it and make that so much easier, which we're gonna do in the, eventually anyway. Now, it does come with a hefty price, but there is an alternative which is this little guy. And I will link both of these down below in the description and you can pick one based on your budget. This one is like a 10th of the price. Does the exact same thing. This one just happens to have a bucket or a reserve for all of your different antifreeze. The waste antifreeze goes down here. The antifreeze that you pulled out of the car goes in here and your fresh antifreeze goes up here. You can drain this tank down into the waste antifreeze if you don't want to reuse it. This one, you basically just have three different buckets and you just move the hose from each bucket depending on what you're doing. If you're filling an empty bucket, you're using your old bucket that you already filled or you're using a fresh bucket. You just move the hose to each one. Whole lot cheaper to buy buckets and this than it is to buy this. This is nice and compact, but I'll let you decide. So I'm gonna use this just cause it's here. So let's get our thermostat back in our car. I clamped off the upper radiator hose and the little vent tube that goes to our thermostat housing so that it's pulling the engine into a vacuum. I just set the thermostat up there and it basically just sucks it right into its little groove and it'll sit in there until we can get our thermostat housing in. Just set the thermostat housing in there. We'll do the bolt on the top since it's the easiest. Get right at it, get it started. Then we can reposition our housing to get the bottom bolt lined up. Definitely a lot easier when we don't have to worry about where that thermostat's at. They did notch out the bottom bolt hole on the housing to give you a false sense of hope that you could actually leave the bolt in there and slide the housing over it. But it doesn't work with the angle you have to get it in there at. So we got our top bolt started. Now you can reach under, get our bottom one started. And then we'll tighten it down. Little by little. Now we'll go back up to the top, tighten that down a little bit. Make sure to tighten them up evenly so we don't crack that thermostat housing. Click. We can put our upper radiator hose on there. Tighten up our hose clamp. 
And we can pull our other clamp off of here. We can put that line back on our housing. We clip it in. And we're going to be very careful getting it started. We don't want to cross thread it. We do cross thread pretty easy. Snug it up with a wrench. Click. And we'll pull our clamp off of this hose. The antifreeze machine has been pulling the system into a vacuum the entire time we've been putting the thermostat in, so it's ready to just refill it. So this little guy is pretty efficient. It will suck all the air out of here and refill the entire cooling system with no air left in it. That's usually not a problem, but on this car, the overflow bottle is part of the cooling system and that's where we're filling it. So if we fill it all the way to the top, when it gets hot and it expands, it's going to puke it all out, which isn't really a problem. It'll seek its own level, except when you're explaining to the customer that you just did work on their cooling system and that antifreeze underneath it is normal, it doesn't go over so well. So there's a couple different ways that you can combat that. You can fill it all up and then drain a little bit down to the level you want, or you can shut this off and close everything up when there's still a little bit of pressure in here. Not much, just a couple PSI. And then just unscrew this. And it's gonna leave our level right down where we want it. That's the easiest way to do it. Sometimes you're not always right. Uh, and if you're not, and you need to add a little bit, all the air out of the system has already gone through the rest of the system, it's all up here. So you could just top it off as you need it. That's the easiest way, instead of explaining to the customer that it's normal for it to be leaking antifreeze after you just worked on the antifreeze. So let's button it all back up and take it for a ride and see if it's warm in there. We'll set the bottom of our air box in here. We do have to line up that tube that comes from the baffle, goes through the apron. Bolt it back down and put in our dirty air filter. We'll put our lid back on. Clip it into the bottom and start one of the screws. Plug in our lines and our hoses and our cables. And tighten up all of our screws and our clamp. We'll put in our duct for our ram air. We need that extra five horsepower. All the push pins in there, even the one that wasn't in there the last time. And we'll tuck our closeout panel under the bumper where it belongs. And start putting our push pins in. We're gonna be missing two. We'll have to take a ride to Scott's Grand Am Emporium and pick those up. I'm back from a short little test drive. Our car does reach operating temperature pretty quick now too. It's got good heat, no leaks. So that portion of our job is done. I still need to drive it around a little bit more to set the rest of the monitors so that they can pass the emissions test. That's the whole reason they brought it in. They have to pass the emissions test to renew their license plates here in Illinois. And in order to pass the emissions test, you can't have a check engine light on. So that's how I got the job. Otherwise, they probably never even would have known it was broken, except they probably didn't notice they didn't have really good heat. Now it's got great heat. So our job is all done. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Because I know we have trust issues. All of our push pins are in. Courtesy of Scott's Grand Am Emporium.